Um, yeah, the response has been good. Everybody was um, really disappointed, you know, with the with the result. Um, but the response has been very good. You know, they they're an, they are really honest group. One of the most honest groups I've ever worked with. So there's nothing dodged or, or you know nothing brushed under. This is where we went wrong. This is what we need to fix. And then we've gone about doing that over the last two days. Um, I think it's whatever feeds forward. So if there's nothing that feeds forward, then you, we got to just move past that. Nothing gets brushed under, but everything's got to feed forward into Wales. There's no good looking at something really specific to Fiji that doesn't feed forward. So as a coaching group, we look at that. You know, what feeds forward? What do we have to fix? That's going to be relevant moving into the Wales game, the Wales week, the whole training week, um, the mindset, how we play the game, and then we, we address it like that. Side of you, what, what does their availability add to the, to the team this week? Yeah, it, it adds a lot. You know, a big ball carrying tight head prop um, and somebody who's captain a team, you know, a really important player, both really important players for us. So, yeah, to get people coming back into the mix is, is always fantastic. It creates more competition in the team. Um, but, you know, Tate's become a really influential player. And I think you saw the first 40 minutes down in Dunedin, you know, just how important Pane's become for us. So, yeah, it's great to have them both back. We're thrilled about it. Yeah, 100%. Oh, no, you're good to go. Just uh, take your tax the day you've gone with your, your situation. Yeah, body's feeling really good, mate. Obviously, um, slow start to the campaign, but uh, ready to go in this week and um, rip in. So. Well, can, you, uh, can you just explain when you did the injury and, and what actually hit um, Yep. So, the first session when we landed in Paris, we. I actually first session in Paris, I had my calf, so um, just lucky enough it wasn't a long-term injury. Um, and I've been able to bounce back early, so I'm uh, really looking forward to come back. Did you feel like your World Cup dream might be over before it started? Sorry? Did you feel like your World Cup might have been over before it started? Uh, man, I had um, you know, good people around me, physio, medical team, so I was, um, you know, the advice was uh, real positive when it first happened, and I was just keen to rip into my rehab and come back. So. And Neil, you mentioned that 40 minutes in Dunedin. Is that the is that like the blueprint of what you guys are looking to achieve and get back to? Because you know you look like well beaters then, but that's kind of been it, hasn't it? Ah uh, no. No, it hasn't been it. There's been a lot more moments than that. You know, I thought there were moments against Georgia. The first 27, 30 minutes against Georgia, um, you know, periods against France who, who looked like a very, very good team. So, no, I don't think there's that 40, just that 40 minute block. There's a lot more to it than that. We've just got to make sure we're more consistent than delivering 40 minute, you know, 40 minute periods. We've got to do that for longer. Even, you know, if you look at the last 20, 25 minutes against Fiji, you know, we've, we've given away a few breakdown penalties, but we're, we're down there pounding in the 22 and we weren't clinical enough. So, yeah, I, I don't think it's fair to say that that's probably the only 40 minutes. I think there's been more to it than that. Neil, yeah, who's in charge of the breakdown and working on that? Uh, the whole coaching group. There's like not one person associated to that, like the, the coaching group. So, Pierre Broncon, myself, Palms, Eddie, we all have input into that. And, you know, when we split forwards, backs, so yeah, everybody has a has a coaching input into that or a responsibility into that. It's not you know one person. I'm responsible for scrum, palms for liner. But when we come to play like that, you know everyone's got to make sure one person can't watch everything. So that's a shared responsibility. Were you concerned by that one on the weekend? Uh, the breakdown. Yeah, you know to lose that many or to lose that many breakdown turnovers is disappointing. So sometimes it's not just the ruck, it's the carry, it's how we look, how we present the ball. Um, you know, so there's a lot more to it than just one thing. So we, we've been pretty good with that uh, in the other games. Um, you know, we, we looked at one or two other areas that we thought were going to be really important against Fiji, um, and you prioritise those in a week. And we, you know, we we probably should have prioritised a bit more on the ruck um, because it's always important. There's 150, 160 of them in the game. Um, but like I said, it's not just one thing. It's not late support or don't work hard on the floor. You know sort of a combination of different things um, but yeah you know that's like I said that's our responsibility how we set training up in the week to make sure we get those bits right. The modern game has changed a lot hasn't it the breakdown is no longer just flankers responsibility is outside backs and, and tight forwards that make a music themselves they're able just to 
talk to that uh, changing of the rules? Yeah, I think it's, you know, even some of the refereeing is contest versus continuity. You know, some of the refs like a real big contest at the breakdown. Some of them, it's a bit more continuity. So you, we've got to work it out really quickly and adapt on the day. Um, but, you know, you see with us, I think La Fichetti got a real big turnover that set us up for the try with, you know, nine minutes to go to probably make it a seven-point game. That was, you know, Lalakai who forced that turnover. So, yeah, you, you'll get them across the board, you know, particularly sides like Fiji. You know, if one to 15, they were, you know, very capable of getting over the ball. We've got La, we've got, uh, you know, Marika, um, Sulivoni Vailu's picked some up. So, yeah, there's threats across, like you say, across the pitch now. It's not just in two or three positions. Uh, yeah, I guess they're just going to come with their physicality. Um, they play a, a different brand of Fiji, obviously, and um, you know, under, under Gatlin, they've been playing a, a good brand as well. So they'll kick the ball a lot, they'll keep the ball in, um, but they'll definitely go to a breakdown, um, considering how it went on the weekend. There's, there's no questions about that. They're going to come hard there. They've got good back rowers that will put pressure there. Um, so for us, we've just got to... We've got to move the point of attack, really. Um, we've got to win that physicality and that mindset battle at the breakdown in order to do that. Did the way Fiji played on the weekend almost prepare you for Wales because they played an un-Fiji style. It was very pragmatic. They took they kicked off four or five penalties. They did attack you at the breakdown but weren't quite as flary and as expansive as we normally see from Fiji. So in a way, has it kind of prepared you for what you're likely to see from Wales? Yeah, definitely. I think you look at uh, the similarities between them, Fiji's mentality at the start of the game to take those threes, Dan Big is going to do the exact same thing with Wales. Um, so all that is, is is we've got to win the physicality. If we don't do that, we're on the back foot, then we invite those those opportunities for them to, to build that scoreboard pressure. Um, so that started yesterday. Uh, we addressed that. There's more to that than just missing a few breakdowns or being late to that. Uh, we've got to make sure it's up here that we're, that we're there from the start of the game against Wales, otherwise we're, we're, we're chasing that, our tyres really. Tate, there's a bit of a trend with some teams at the moment that you get to three or four phases, and if you're not really making those yards, you're going to kick the ball away. There's a few kicks on the weekend, I understand you weren't playing, sort of in around that attacking 22. Was that a result of that kind of strategy or just decisions in that moment? Uh, I'd say, mate, it's got to be a decision from, from the individual. Uh, we, we definitely don't want to play footy in our own half, and that's that's generally every team, um, you know, all bit the Kiwis probably. So for us, uh, we've got to be a lot smarter with those kicks um, because against a team like Wales, all you do is you give them possession. Um, so you've got to make it a contest. If it's not a contest or if it's not going into touch, uh, you're essentially just handing them the ball. And a team like Wales, they'll make you pay for that. So... We've addressed uh, some of those kicks, um, and we'll be looking to, to be a lot better this weekend in that space. Tyler, I assume you're captain this week. Uh, I'm not, not quite sure, so uh, we'll, we'll see how we go there. Is that not a bit weird to not know in this, like you were vice captain before game one? Is that not a bit weird to not know? Uh, no, we, we've got a strong leadership group, so anyone in that group is capable of taking that role. Uh, you saw Dave Parecki take, a, take over um, throughout it, and, and I missed that game. So, um, mate, we'll just have to see. Yeah, can you speak to that? Like, if a guy's not know if he's going to captain his country on the weekend, like, is that not a bit unstable, no, do you think? No, not at all. I think we'll find our selection tonight and then announce the side tomorrow, you know, to, to the players. So that'll all get done on the back of today, see how everyone comes through training. Um, like Tate said, that leadership group, which still includes people like Scouts, Slips, Tate, um, you know, they sit down, they, they work out how we, you know, how with, along with the coaching group, how we want to play, um, how, what we want the game to look like. So, yeah, I think we've been in, in enough games now and lost people in important positions to know that we, it's not just one person. So we'll finalise all of that today and tomorrow. Sure, but it's pretty rare for international teams to chop and change a cap and a World Cup. Would you agree? Um, uh, some are maybe a bit more stable, so guys like South Africa that are eight years into a cycle or, or Fiji that are eight years into a cycle, yep, we're seven, eight games into it. So, um, look, like I said to you, it's not, it's not a massive thing for us. Uh, we've got people that do that in a week that have done it in games for us. Um, so we'll decide on the best person for that today and then go through that tomorrow. So it's uh, pretty much an all or nothing game on Sunday. Does that help you? Does that increase your focus? Is that actually a good thing for you? You know you've got four ball in on this one 
Uh, yeah, I'd say yes to answer your question, but you know, I'd be disappointed if that wasn't our mindset from the start of this campaign. So uh, all that all this is now is that it's it's a result. We have to get that result. Um, so we've seen a big shift from boys. Uh, you know, the hangover from that performance against Fiji, we had to throw it in the bin as quickly as possible because of the importance of this game. So, um, and, and I've been really happy with the response on the training field from it. Hey, it was a pretty tough day out for Carter against Fiji. He's targeted. I mean, how's he, how does he have this week in terms of his mindset? And, and how's, he, how's he been, I guess? Yeah, he's been good. Uh, I, I just want to make it really clear, it wasn't just Carter who had a tough day out there. Um, there was definitely other people in the same boat. Um, and particularly being in a position where on oh, my halfback, he's a fly half. If, if we're losing that battle at the breakdown, uh, it's, it's, it's a very tough day regardless. So uh, he's been good though. He, he's really resilient. Um, I'm, re I'm really close with him. Um, he's incredibly disappointed, of, of course. Um, and the, ho the whole squad is because of uh, that performance. But uh, you've got to have a short memory, particularly given how important you know, his preparation will be into this next game. Eddie was saying the other day that um, you're all grown up, so you wouldn't tell you not to go on social media in the people to make their own decisions. Which way do you lead? Do you like take it all on board, read all the anger stuff that motivate you, or do you block it out? The anger stuff? Oh, I like to read, read social media where there's a lot of criticism. Do you, do you read it and like take it all on board, or? Or just like ignore it completely. No, mate, I'm pretty casual. Um, you know, where I grew up, my Instagram's full of bloody surfing or NRL. You know, like I'm not, I'm not looking at uh, stuff. I'm aware. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, you know, uh, oblivious to the fact that that we're under pressure on social media, particularly. Um, but that's not my style. I, I don't get on there. I don't choose to prove doubt is wrong. I'll, uh, you know, I like to do the the talking. Um, come, come on the weekend for game night. Andy was saying that like, people wanted to play the next day, you were ready to play, I guess, for you having that long break. Is that, the fear? is that your feeling? How keen are you to get back? And is there a mood within the team that everyone just can't wait to get out there? Yeah, 100%. And we saw that at training today. Um, you know, once we got into the grind of it, uh, training. Whenever the, the ball gets in the boys' hands, they're ready to go again. So that's what, that's what I really like about this group. Um, after the game, it was... It was so quiet in the change room because we knew exactly, uh, you know, the situation we put ourselves in. We were incredibly disappointed, but um, you know what we've seen is is the next man. He's, whoever steps in this week, they have to do a job. It's it's as simple as that. I know that forty minutes that you did like the performance in Dunedin. Um, I guess you know, you know, how do you reflect on that? Is that sort of you? Felt like you, I don't know, got to where you want to be, I suppose, as a player, and you know, how's it been in terms of accelerating your um, development? Yeah, obviously, the performance was, as, as a collective, we probably one of our best 40 minutes, and um, <clears throat> yeah, we had a great week that week, and um, there's no reason why we can do that here, but um, yeah, um, Eddie's obviously been massive to me as well. Um, you know, as long as it, as every other coach, um, you know, Eddie's just probably just away from the field, probably been stuck into me um, through through my mindset, and I uh, really helped develop that um, to I guess growing into um, I guess from a uh, into a man kind of um, stepping into those. You know, Nala's obviously set the platform for for me and um, kind of shift shift um, into that. Um, stepping stone of going um, t to be my best. So, um, yeah. I think that one of your coaches described you as like a hippopotamus on roller skates or something. <laughs> we won't be um, back to the rebels. But, like, was that something that, I mean, obviously, you want to embrace that you're fast and whatever else, but was that sort of also, you had to kind of change your mindset about, like, really what you need to be a test prop? Yeah, obviously, being a test prop. You got to nail your role, um, which is my set piece, and um, you know, obviously, I'm still new to this game. Um, I'm only, I guess, I'm six years into being professional, and um, you know, I come from a league background, and, and scrummaging is not easy. So, it's coming from league where um, you know they just pack down, you know, not really fought, um, no technical technical side to it, to come in here and you know, really picking up the. Um, 
just the, the, being a tight head. Um, yeah, it, it wasn't easy, and I'm still learning, and I'm real open to you know. Um, you know, obviously, hats coming in and um, really helping me there as well, as well as palms. So. I think he's probably undersold a little bit. He's he's our most improved player. You know, for a guy who didn't start regularly for the Rebels, you know, to doing what he's doing at the moment um, is phenomenal. His body's changed, his whole attitude, his mindset, how he approaches training. Um, you know, like it's the tough position, toughest position in the game. That tight head prop, and even though he's a big man. Like a hippo on roller skates, I think he said he's, um, you know, how he's changed and what he's done uh, is nothing short of phenomenal. So he, he's been our most improved player in, in in the short time that he's been with us. So we couldn't be more pleased with where he's going and, you know, what's ahead of him, not just this weekend, but moving forward. Tony, um, obviously you've got to win the game first, but the way the permutations of this group is that it could come down to bonus points. Um, is that something that you're aware of? And with that in mind, is, can people expect to see a more attacking approach in this game? Because you you want to you don't want to win ten nine, right? You want to you want to smash them. Yeah, I think there's always context to that kind of stuff. We're we're aware of the bonus point situation, um, but at the forefront of our mind is is a, is a is a performance that actually puts us in a position to be able to capitalise on those points. So we, we've done it every week. We've put ourselves in that position. We haven't been good enough. Whether it's the breakdown, whether it's the last pass. Um, so for us, we've got a game plan that gets us to the right spots. We've just got to make sure we're clinical enough at the breakdown and we're, we're clear in our minds exactly what we want to do when we get down there. So, um, but yeah, to answer your question, we're, we're across that the bonus point. Um, but we're thinking about getting the victory first and foremost. Neil, um, Wales have been through a bit of turmoil and change, I guess, a bit, a bit similar to Australia, but how do you assess where they are at, at the moment? Yeah, you know, I think they're probably back, you know, under Warren Gatlin, they've had great stability and then he's moved away and come back. And I think one of the things that he does really well, I've coached against him quite a bit, is he brings belief in his squads. You know, he, he gets him believing that they, the, the fittest, et cetera, et cetera. So I think he creates good belief in the squads and his team's always tough to beat. You know, whilst teams have traditionally been very tough to beat no matter where you play them. Um, so yeah, it's, it's going to be a tough game. I just, yeah, I think he's done a, he's done a great job there from where they were, you know, they were doing really well and then struggled under different coaching staff and since he's come in, there's been a definite upswing. And Tate, have you played, you played at Cardiff? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, just, uh, I know there'd be a lot of Welsh fans there as well singing um, you expecting maybe a crowd to be against you in terms of noise? Uh, yeah, we, we are expecting. I think uh, what we've seen every game of this World Cup, um, for some reason teams don't, don't like us. Um, you know, so they're, they're singing the Fijian songs. Um, no doubt they'll be singing the the Wales songs this weekend. Um, but what we're across that, we're embracing that. Uh, we don't mind that at all. Do you to make an appeal to the French neutrals to, to get on board jerseys? <laughs> yeah, I might if they want. Yeah. And Neil, there has been a lot of moving parts this year, um, from <coughs> captaincies to um, yeah, rotation of teams, to coaching structure. Do you think that's helped or hindered this side? Um, or maybe a little bit of both. You know, anything that's new is not easy, um, but I think fresh ideas are always important. You know, you, you can get caught in a rut over a three, four, five, six, seven year period where it's the same people, same voices. Um, but I do appreciate that, you know, particularly in the short amount of time that we had, um, that what's new is not easy, but that's, that's not a reason where we are where we are. Um, like I said to you, the, the, the players have been brilliant absolutely brilliant in terms of um, getting on board and trying to do what we're trying to do so you know we've just got to make it work. Do you guys subscribe to, like, to Tibet Benny Darwin's cohesion kind of theory around that sort of stuff or is that out the window with this campaign? Um, no look cohesion's always I've read that it's, it's quite an interesting read isn't it so Palms has put me on to that um, our PhD professor so he uh, he's no it's a good read there's definite you know, there's there's 100% um, viability to that. So you know, the greater cohesion, the better it is. But it's not the only thing. Like I said to you, look at Ireland and South Africa sides that are seven, eight years into a cycle. That cohesion is hugely important. Um, we're not, so it becomes irrelevant. We've got to find another way. And um, we you know we're not going to sit here and go, oh, we, it's not cohesive. We haven't had enough time. The time is the time. It is what it is. Five months, six months, whatever it is, we've got to get on with it and, and make the you know make the most of it. What about Gats? Like, do you think it's easier actually knowing uh, how his sides play? Um, yeah, he's, he's got a, a, a pretty similar way of playing. Um, you know, it's the way that they played and then 
played when he wasn't there and then under Wayne Pivak and now how they're playing again a bit more, you know, a lot more like he's done previously. Um, and again, he makes it work for them. You know, he creates good belief in, in what they're trying to do. So, yeah, look, I think if you watch most teams over a four or five game period, you'll pick up a, a lot of it's, you know, 75, 80% is pretty much what they try and do the same every week. Um, yeah, so we're, we're aware of what's coming. We've, we've got to be good enough to stop it. You yeah, spoke about uh, cycles before. Do you believe in Eddie's vision going forward with this team, like next year and beyond, and what he's trying to create? Yeah, I think so. I, I do. You know, I, I saw it with uh, you know the, the team that we worked with previously together um, on the line series. You know, we took guys like young players, eighteen year olds. We took four, five, eighteen year olds, nineteen year olds, and those guys are all forty cap internationals now. You know, played in World Cup finals. So, yeah, I think so. You know, we've had a look at. Uh, well, Eddie's had a, a much closer look at where he believes Australian rugby is and, and what it needs to move forward. Um, so yeah, I've got a, a huge amount of faith in, in the plan that he puts out. Hey, you mentioned um, the players, the need to shake it off you know, immediately. How did the players in particular do that? Did you come together as a group away from the coaches, do anything off the pitch? Were there any particularly hard conversations to have? Uh, yeah, we did a bit of both, to answer your question. Um, yeah, the leadership group took the boys aside uh, and we, we had a couple of honest admissions um, around, you know, boys putting their hand up and admitting that, that that's not what we stand for, that's just not good enough, particularly at this part of the tournament. Um, so like Hats was alluding to at the start, the, the honesty in the group was, was, was awesome to see. Um, because yeah, it was a tough watch. Let's let's not. We had we had to call that out. We had to put everything on the table um, so that we we don't fall into the same trap. Um, and then yeah, Eddie's been really good at driving the mindset part as well um, with, with all the coaching staff. So we've got a real clear plan of, of how we want to go into this game this weekend. Um, and straight away we, we we had to to bring everything we're feeding forward and put and put that in place. Was that on Sunday or Monday? Oh sorry, Monday or Tuesday. Uh, what's the day today? Monday, yeah, yeah, Monday, Monday, yeah, yeah, so straight off the game. Neil, um, on the all or nothing theme again for Sunday, is, do you get a sense from Eddie that he's sharp this week, that he's, his focus is sharper? Can you tell that he's more on it than ever? Um, so, how do you tell? Uh, yeah, look, I have to be honest, I worked him for five years, he's sharp every day. Um, you know, and not just, that's not blowing smoke up his backside, he's just that sort of individual, he leaves. You know, no stone unturned. My first message came through at about half past four this morning. Um, and that's how he works. You know, he, he's got a great belief in, in preparation and leaving no stone unturned. And that's starting to reflect through the group. So, yeah, look, he's, I think, as a coach, you, you got, I'd rather not be in a position, but you like these weeks. You know, these are the weeks that you coach for, um, where it is basically you're playing for all the marbles. Um, so I'd love to be in a position where we've won 10 from 10 and we're already qualified and everything. That's great. That's brilliant. But these are great coaching weeks and I think they're great playing weeks. You know, I've seen a real response from, from the two lads up here and from the rest of the group. You know, they understand what's on the game um, and you know, nobody's shying away from it. We're, we're getting into it. So we know what we're playing for and they're great weeks to be involved in. You know, this is sport at the highest level in the biggest tournament that comes around every four years. Um, so it's a great week to be involved in. Do you get a bit of confidence having beaten the Welsh last year? That's not within the team. Do you take some of that confidence? Yeah, 100%. 100%. Um, I think that was our last, uh, that was our last, uh, you know, time we played the Welsh team. Um, but uh, it's insane. It's a completely different Wales team. And it's a, it's a largely different Wallabies team as well. So, uh, but yes, we will take that, that confidence into the game.